Once upon a time, in a land somewhere south of Anchorage and north of Seattle, small-scale fishermen thrived and were prosperous. Sea cucumber bags came up full. Crab pots came up loaded. Gooey ducks were so abundant, you wanted to well, just hug them. Fishermen were beside themselves with happiness. That was until the sea otter arrived. So the sea otters are native to Alaska, uh, and but they were exterminated from southeast Alaska in the fur trade in the 1800s. By 1911, there were no otters left. Since the 1960s, when Fish and Game released about 400 sea otters uh, to southeast Alaska, those sea otter populations have expanded greatly. The populations are growing at a, in southern southeast Alaska at about 12% per year. The um, numbers now are on the order of about um, 20,000 otters in all of southeast Alaska. watched um, the sea otters move in and basically remove everything. And hundreds of miles of shoreline where there are really no large invertebrates that remain. And uh, there are those that would say that this is a perfectly normal thing and that this is sea otters reaching uh, their historical uh, per, per, uh, place in, in the whole ecosystem. And then of course, if we simply look at the commercial fisheries aspect, the dive fisheries aspect, there are certain places in southern southeast Alaska where the commercial fisheries will be, be completely decimated. There will be uh, no fisheries eventually. And I think if you were to talk to the dive industry, it's quite dire as far as the value of their fishery, the ability of their fisheries to, uh, to provide a living. So there's an ongoing project that's a collaboration between uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the University of Alaska. We are looking at the feeding habits of sea otters. We're interested in quantifying their diets to look at what percentage of commercially important species are in their diets. Um, we're also interested in um, bigger picture questions too, sort of what's the ecological role of sea otters. Sea otters um, are quite voracious predators. They have to consume about 25% of their body weight per day. We tagged uh, 30 sea otters and we're tracking those at the edge of their range. We're interested in particular if sea otters at the edge of their range have different behaviors that ones, uh, than ones that are in other locations. Just another beautiful day again. I think that from a, a manager's point of view, you can't allow anything to be unchecked, anything to be unmanaged, and whether it's elephants or whether it's sea otters or whether it's eagles or whether it's whales. I mean, there has to be some management of sorts to really keep the, uh, this, the whole ecosystem stable. Now, it all, it's more political uh, with those decisions as far as what's more important, uh, having sea otters or having our dive fisheries. Sea otters, I think, are a great example where we need an ecosystem-based management approach because predators are a part of the system um, and uh, fishing and humans are part of the system. And we need a, a way to incorporate both of them, for example, when managing a resource such as Dungeness crab or sea cucumbers or gooey ducks, um, something that humans and otters are both interested in. In some cases, there may not be a balance. It's not, ecosystem-based management doesn't mean balance, everybody gets a piece, but it means that you take all the pressures and take them into account when managing the system as a whole.